Hello my beautiful co-creators, Lilu here. I'm on Big Island with Celeste, that is a, one of the a beautiful divine beings that I just met here through the symposium that Joan Ocean organized here with dolphins. It was absolutely an amazing week and it was amazing synchronicities to have met you. You have so much love and joy for those dolphins, for the ocean, for this work and for what's possible through their, through us being in their presence. You yourself had a, an amazing experience one day. Tell us about your story with them and how all this unfolded to where it's at now. Okay. Um, thank you so much, Lulu, for <laughs> allowing me to share my story with everyone. She looked like a mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I feel like a mermaid most of the time, that's true. Um, if I could, I'd like to start more on the beginning, when I was three years old. I've always been able to how should I say, interact or communicate with the unseen world, yeah. with the angelic realm. It really actually began there. When I was three years old, the angels actually told me to ask my parents for dolls. And when I would get a doll, that would be a certain angel that would actually speak through the doll and that way no one would know that I'm actually speaking with the angels or no one would say who you are talking to Celeste. So I had many dolls as you can imagine and uh, that was my beginning. I, I never lost communication with the angelic realm. I believe in my truth is that I came from the uh, archangelic realm uh -huh. and um, I'm working as an archangelic uh, being here now. And so the communication was meant for me to always stay in communication with the angelics. Mm -hmm. And then further down the road, I think when I was about five, I found that uh, this book that my dad had had, and it was a, a Moby Dick book. And I couldn't read really quite yet, but I would take that book before I would go to sleep at night and just put it at my heart. And I just knew the the whales were speaking through me but I didn't at five know why or what was going on but w in my recollection clearer when I was five years old the whales were communicating with me too mm. and I lived on the ocean at that point uh, Northern California oceans there and then this further progressed and I actually moved inland thinking wow I'm moving away from the ocean and then also we were uh, I was I guess you could say I was always around uh, either mountains, water, uh, forests, my whole life. Uh -huh. And so at an early age, I remember walking through the forest and these energies would just, I could feel these huge energies, very loving, very beautiful, that would just kind of be there and I didn't understand what they were, but they were communicating with me. It was not until when I was 18 years old that I realized that same energy because the energy was just as loving as the angelics for me. And uh, I grew up in what we call Bigfoot country. And oh, so you've met Bigfoot? Yes. <laughs> actually, per personally, 18 years old, actually Bigfoot, I lived in the country, Bigfoot actually came to my home and let out a screech. It was late at night. I'd just gotten home from a date and uh, my back was towards the, the picture window mm -hmm. and this screech came out. A high pitch, just like the dolphins will do their high pitch sonar, that sometimes we don't hear the highest, highest pitches of the sonar, but it's going into our cells of our body. Yeah. But there was this, this screech and it just, it kind of froze me and like, wow. And I just froze in time. And then I felt the energy that was back behind me outside of the picture window. And then I just relaxed and went, oh, wow. And so much love came. But it was a huge, huge energy. And then this energy just kind of faded out. And I turned around. I wasn't afraid whatsoever. Yeah. And then it's like in those timings, this energy kind of wipes out what really went on in that moment. I didn't realize what was going on till later in life. This is how they do. And then I just went to bed like normal. It's like, oh, my boyfriend came out the next morning 
and said all these reporters were going down to the diversion dam there was a, a, the, where the salmon would come up the river and I lived right next to that and saying that somebody made these footprints of Bigfoot all around and I went no oh my god Bigfoot was at my house last night that was the screech that was Bigfoot at my home and then I had total confirmation that they then they really began to uh, work with me like I said I would uh, when I lived in Oregon I walked the forest roads every day and then go into the ocean and then walk along the beach and this was my daily routine the forest with the energy of Bigfoot and the oceans where I could sense the dolphins and whales and all that so you have several encounters with them. What would you say there? So it's not a legend, huh? No, it's, it's, it's part of my life. Yeah. This is part of my life that I feel that what I'm here doing and have from an early childhood age of remembering is that I have the affinity with the angelic realm and also here on the earth with the cetaceans, the whales and the dolphins, and... Uh, Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. who, they were very high energy loving beings. So I've had that all my life. When people, you know, later in life would talk about, oh, well, this came in my life or this came in my life. And nothing came into my life. It's always been with me. Mm. And then um, I had an opportunity in, I think it was 94, uh, went down to Del Mar with my husband. He had a conference. And when I went down there, he, he went to the conference and I just walked along the beach and all of a sudden in these waves I see these dolphins riding the waves. This is my first really encounter at the point because uh, I lived inland so I wasn't around the ocean at that point but these dolphins just fall as I'm walking along the beach these dolphins are actually walking or walking <laughs> they're actually just flowing through the waves at my pace uh -huh. and I looked out and saw them and all of a sudden I went oh, I knew what they were saying I could communicate with them and then I made a turn to come back up the beach. When I made the turn, the dolphins made the turn and rode the waves back following my pace and we communicated the whole time. So the rest of the trip, I was out at like the Marine World, which we were in Del Mar, what they called out, um, I think it was Marine World. And I would sit with the dolphins and just talk to them and then I'd go over to the whales talk to them and I realized wow I can I know what they're saying I can communicate with them and the last day I was there um, they let me give one of the dolphins fish because these are captive dolphins and I just I put my hand on its head and I go I'm gonna swim with you guys and you, I, were afraid, you were afraid of water well of swimming I'm not really I, I could swim, but I've never had a snorkel or mask or anything on my face because um, I had some trauma early on in my life where nothing could go over my face. So at this point, I had never put a mask on my face at this point, but I knew I was supposed to swim with them. So when I get home, which was on the mainland, on my recorder is... is uh, my friend saying, would you like to go to Hawaii to swim with dolphins when I get home? I went, oh my gosh, yes, I'm going to Synchronicity. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I go, yes, I'm going to swim with them. Yay. The following week, I'm here in Hawaii swimming with the dolphins. Now the most incredible experience happened. Now here I was, um, I had to put a mask and snorkel on to go swim with the dolphins. So the first time I put a mask on, I really had to take it off. Mm -hmm. I went, oh my gosh, I can't have this on. And then I went, the only way I'm going to see these dolphins, I'm going to have to have this on. So my first day out, I just all of a sudden I just asked the dolphins, please help me. You know, I'm coming to see you, help me. And so all of a sudden I started moving along and then the breathing everything came easy it's like they just sent all this energy around me went relaxed me and then I realized also that they were going to take me through dimensions in time before I even got to them I went oh they're gonna show me dimensions in time so I'm going out to them now remember before that I couldn't even have a mask on 
And so I was very comfortable. And I, we found a group of, I think there's about six or seven dolphins. Mm -hmm. And this one dolphin veered off from the group, came right up to me, and we were just like eye to eye like this, oh, wow. looking at each other, just, you know, my first swim out. And I'm looking at this dolphin, and I'm going, wow. And then all of a sudden, I didn't realize what was going, but this dolphin was showing me every dimension in time. I was, we were going through, I remember the suspended time where all of a sudden there was silence, which, which Bigfoot would do to me when I was in the forest. Mm -hmm. They'd put me in a vortex mm -hmm. where you hear nothing. Mm -hmm. And then you walk out and you hear the birds. So I already was familiar with that. So here I am in this dimension in time, a suspended time, which is a dimension that we can all, you know, get to or see or go into. And so I'm there and then just went to, the, I went to 12 dimensions. What were the other dimensions like? They all were different. I could see everything going around me in every dimension, but every dimension felt like I was getting lighter and lighter and more carefree and it was very beautiful. Now little did I know, because I wasn't that well of a swimmer, remember, or at first I, uh, you know, threw my mask off going, ah, I got uh -huh. this on. And so, so I had a partner that was watching me that was a um, uh, lady that used to work uh, at the ocean as a guard, uh, or as a lifeguard, uh -huh. lifeguard. Mm -hmm. So she says, I'll take Celeste. So anyway, I didn't know at this time, going through the dimensions, you, you just disappear. My body is no longer there. And I had a pink snorkel, pink mask, pink fins, and a pink suit when I first began. Hard to miss, yeah. <laughs> and hot pink. <laughs> so how do you miss that? But nobody could see me. But I could see everyone else. I didn't know no one could see me. So I swam with a dolphin for a while, and then I swam into shore, and Lisa was her name. I became very good friends after that. But anyway, she was standing on the shore thinking, if I stand on the shore, I'll be able to look out. I'll see that pink. Uh -huh. You know, so that's what she did. So she goes to the shore. Well, I come out from the water. And as I'm coming out of the water, I'm walking right in front of her. And then I said, hey, Lisa, what's up? Because that's how we would kind of talk to each other. And her eyes just got huge. I mean, they were just like, whoa. She goes, how did you get out of the water? And I went, I walked, <laughs> like right in front of you. She goes, no, Celeste, I'm not kidding you. How did you get out of the water? And I went, Lisa, I walked in front. And then I got the message from the dolphins, because I could communicate with them, that said, until you spoke, y you weren't visible, even walking on land. Now this is my first dolphin swim 19 years ago. That has to change your life forever. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And so this is why today that I, my passion is bringing people here to Hawaii to swim with the spinner dolphins. And then I also take people to Tonga to actually get in the waters with the South Pacific humpback whales. Mm. This is my passion and what I know I'm here to do to invite people to be into their environment and because they change your lives. Mm. What, do you think, yeah, what do you think their main message of dolphins is? <sighs> or, or. We're, yeah, uh, the main message is for us to be of joy, to be of love, to come together as a because the dolphins swim in pods and for us to unite yeah. as one pod and there's not separation and the whales message is real similar but they're even on a higher scale level of of the unity consciousness of nurturing and expanding us into w realms where we aren't even thinking it's possible to go to the whales will do that so it's from both of their perspectives it's about unity oneness coming together loving each other dolphins being playful yeah. you know I mean after all this time with the dolphins and I swim every day with it with the dolphins uh -huh. that they're in but I do swim every day is that how do I say
What is it for us? Just, just be who we are. Know who we are, be who we are. Experience life from a perspective of love from your heart. And come from your heart when you're speaking with another, regardless of what you might be thinking or feeling in the moment. If we speak from our heart, we speak the truth of the moment. And the person will receive that and they'll be able to see who they are through that interaction with you when we're... It's the Lemurian heart. I, I uh, remember Lemuria. And um, so Lemuria is all about the higher heart and be who we are through our hearts. It's fifth dimensional energies. And so I, I believe I would leave it at the dolphins and whales are Lemuria. And they're saying, be that fifth dimensional heart energy again, and then you'll be able to gradually move yourself into Lemuria once more, into the paradise, into uh, the oneness of all that is, and we become one with everything everything beautiful well it's been such a delight and a pleasure to share this moment with you and share your message with the world and i've been totally you know amazed by the, this connection with the dolphins too this was my first time this week and you it, it and it absolutely i felt their love and their connection and the resonance of their heart and uh, and I really got, you know, that we're all doing this work, uh, all of us, them, us, and as we're stepping in life with those higher frequency and being in the heart, then we are impacting others just by our own presence, just our own way. And, yes. and that's, that's what a beautiful time to be alive right now. Thank you for, for, for your message, too, and having the courage to step out and do it on camera, too. I know it's not always easy, so thank you. Yes. <laughs> You're so welcome, Lulu, and to everyone out there that does listen to this or see this, um, I just send you much love, gratitude, and just be who you are, and know that we're all one, and there's nothing higher or, I don't want to use the word better, but nothing higher than just be who you are and uh, be in your hearts, and I'm grateful to you that I can you know, send this message out and we had an immediate heart connection and I know it will continue and grow so thank you so much Lulu for your presence here on the planet and the service that you're doing for everyone so I'm in gratitude and love you dear one love you too and love you guys my juicy beautiful co-creators we send you much love from beautiful Hawaii and ton and ton of beautiful energy <laughs> Aloha. Aloha, mahalo. <laughs>